Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and this is by request. But before I get started, I just want to mention this, and a big thanks to everybody. I posted this on Instagram yesterday. I went over 70,000 subs on, uh, I think it was late Friday night. So anybody who are, who's ever watched a video, shared a video of mine, or liked a video, I just want to say a big thanks. 70,000 subs, that is kind of weird to me, but big thanks to everybody. Now, I was going to include this in a Q&A video that I've been putting together, but I'm in no hurry to finalize that one, and I'm still finding things to include. And I've been getting some really good questions. I want to thank you for that. But something I have looked into and made videos about is whatever happened at the end of the last Ice Age. And I have included uh, videos from Randall Carlson and a few others. One thing in all my research that I have come to fully understand now is how catastrophic the history of the earth has been and it's just not impacts one thing i have also investigated is volcanoes and i have mentioned them in a few videos we have all heard of santorini and vesuvius and toba and tambora and some other really disastrous volcanoes i think the last great one we had was roughly 1500 years ago and it came from this area of the world Volcanoes have played a part in the human story, and sometimes they even make their way into religious texts. I have talked about this, and it seems 250,000 Hyksos, after they lost a war with the southern Egyptians, went north in a mass exodus. And this is where certain stories evolve. My view on the Bible is they are based on true stories, and then the God is just invoked into the story. To fit the biblical narrative, it says here, Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from the furnace in the sight of the Pharaoh. Moses is to toss it in the air. It will become fine dust over all the land of Egypt, and festering boils will break out on man and beast throughout the land. So they took soot from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. Moses tossed it into the air, and festering boils broke out on man and beast. And what was happening when a quarter of a million Hyksos were going north after they lost the war to the southern Egyptians? Santorini went off, a volcano went off, and then they just put this into the biblical tale as a power of their god. But a topic I have never covered is the Dark Ages. And I have read certain things and I have had a lot of questions. Were the Dark Ages caused by an impact? But I remembered reading about what they called the Mayan Dark Age, where there wasn't any building and nothing seemed to be happening and it all seemed to be about basically survival. And this went on for almost a century. And I have heard a few suggestions. So I decided to look into this and I think this is worth a video by itself. And here is one article that says volcanic eruption may have plunged the Maya into a dark age. And here they talk about El Chicon, and a volcano that a small volcano that may have erupted and played a part in this Mayan dark age. But it was something much greater. And it was the second biggest eruption in the last 200,000 years. And it plunged the earth into what we call the dark ages. And this is the best evidence I have found. Now I will leave some links below. It says, 536 of the current era, the Byzantine historian Procopius wrote of a thick fog that suffocated the sun and plunged all the Mediterranean into a year of cold and darkness. The phenomenon would start the signal of one of the greatest disease pandemics in history, the Plague of Justinian. In a single year, the outbreak killed an estimated 25 million citizens of the empire. It would be another two centuries until the plague finally succumbed, but by then, 50 million people had died in its wake. And it came about during this year that the most dread portent took place, for the sun gave forth its light without brightness, like the moon, during this whole year, and it seemed exceedingly like the sun in eclipse. But for the beams it shed were not clear, nor such it is accustomed to shed, wrote Procopius, and from the time when this thing happened, men were free neither from war nor pestilence, nor any other thing leading to death, and it was this time when Justinian was in the tenth year of his reign. And, man, the story 
what happened in Constantinople. It's just dreadful and really brutal. And Justinian, he died just like just about everybody else. Now it says Procopius wasn't the only scholar to take note of a chain of sudden catastrophic events in 536 of the current era and the years to follow. And also tree rings record what was obviously a year without any growth. It says in Gaelic Irish annals, an unknown author remarked of the failure of bread in 536 of the current era. In the same year, a yellow dust that rained down like snow was seen in China, and a dense dry fog descended upon the region between Europe and the Middle East. Further north, Old Norse literature chronicled the Fimber Winter, or notoriously long winter, which is evidenced by hordes of gold sacrificial offerings in abandoned settlements. And across the Pacific, an unprecedented drought kicked off the toppling of the Mesoamericas, Teotihuacan, and brought down the mighty Moche civilization of Peru. And I made a video on them a couple months ago. But it's obvious something very, very bad happened, and it took place in Central America. But let's go down and take a look at Lake Ilopango. And when this really super volcano went off, when this caldera erupted around 536 AD, this set off a chain of catastrophes that was one of the most disastrous times in the world's history, and certainly the most disastrous time in the last 2,000 years. How big is this place? Well, let's just do some measuring here real quick. From north to south, it is about... 5.2 miles across from east to west maybe about six miles across and from southwest to northeast about seven and a half miles that's just the water the rim is much larger so the scope of this super volcano when it went off well I don't think we've seen anything quite like it in our current era this is earthmagazine.org. I will leave the link below. El Salvador's Lake Ilopango, near the capital city of San Salvador, is known for boating, diving, and the rugged scenic beauty of its 100-meter tall cliffs, the lip of the caldera that holds the lake. However, 1,500 years ago, it may have been the site of one of the most horrific natural disasters in the world. It may also be the long-sought cause of the extreme climate cooling and crop failures of A.D. 535 and 536, reported by Robert A. Dull of the University of Texas at Austin at the Association of American Geographers Annual Meeting in New York this week. New research on the extent and the timing of the eruption now places the eruption previously thought to have occurred three centuries earlier at the right time and place. The massive Plinian-type event with pyroclastic flows would have instantly killed up to 100,000 people, displaced up to 400,000 more, and filled the skies with ash and dust for more than a year. The new findings would make it the second largest volcanic eruption in the last 200,000 years. This event was much bigger than we ever thought, Dull said. Such an eruption would explain the episode of Mayan history known as the classic period hiatus when the Mayas stopped building stella decorative stone columns erected to mark events, Dull said. It would also finally explain the global cooling of AD 535 and 536 an 18-month period of cloudy skies, crop failures, and famines that was described in both Roman and Chinese historical accounts, so it's very well established this event took place. The question was the cause. In 2008, analysis of ice cores recovered in Greenland and Antarctica dated to AD 536 showed similar levels of sulfate, indicating a massive tropical volcanic eruption had ejected ash around the planet. However, the location of the tropical volcano that erupted in AD 536 and produced a sufficient volume of ash to block out the sun remained unknown. There have been some suggestions such as Krakatoa, but the dates and sedimentary evidence didn't align. In 2001, Dahl had reevaluated carbon-14 dates of a thick white layer of tephra located called the Tierra Blanca Joven, or TBJ, or Young White Land, which had placed the Ilopango eruption at AD 260. 
Dull's 2001 analysis placed it sometime between AD 408 and 536. At the time, however, the TBJ eruption was not thought to have been large enough to have caused global cooling. Over the last years, however, researchers have discovered TBJ tephra deposits dating from 400 to 600, even further afield in Nicaragua, Honduras, and in offshore deposits. The wider geographic distribution of the TBJ deposits indicate the eruption produced a much larger volume of ash and debris, which Dull now calculates at 84 cubic kilometers. And I have read further research it was more like 100 cubic kilometers were ejected. It says nearly five times larger than previously thought. An eruption that big has to leave a big hole in the ground, Dull said, and the dimensions of Ilopango's caldera at 11 kilometers by 17 kilometers fit the bill. Such an eruption would merit a rating of 6.9 on the volcanic explosivity index, larger than the 1816 eruption of Tambora which caused the year without a summer. Now I will leave a few links below as far as videos, but this volcano I didn't know very much about at all, but this one had the big implications around the world. That was Mr. Dull who I just read about, but when this lake went off it really had global implications and it's written about as the dark age or the year without crops. This is the best candidate current research has all pointed to this in my research. There was no escape in this one. The people in this immediate area and the surrounding vicinity didn't have a prayer. And the dust cloud that sent up really encircled the earth probably within a few days. It says new carbon 14 dates have placed the eruption between AD 450 and 545 AD and 536 is the time of this so-called dark age and new studies have really narrowed the window between 500 and 550 a window of just 50 years so this fits perfectly and this is the best evidence by far that is the best evidence as far as what caused what we know is the dark age around 536 this disaster encompassed the whole world. Lake Ilopango is the best evidence. I told you why. Hope you thought that was cool and you all have a very nice day.